Show us your tips, Daggy. And Beaver is back to do racing things, uh, to look at uh, Canary and Sandown Hillside this afternoon. How are you, Beaver? Missed you this weekend. Uh, yeah, mate. Um, yeah, I'm well. I'm glad to be back and uh, ready to rock and roll today with uh, hopefully a few winners on a very uh, still and sunny day in Sydney. It is a still and sunny day, which should mean we get to a borderline, well, the old-fashioned dead track at Canterbury, where we're going to kick off. The rail moves out six. It's currently listed as soft. Uh, all those conditions being in play, I think you might be able to sit in the running line and run on here. It won't be all rails at Canterbury. I found the rail goes out a bit further. You can swoop, so I've treated it a little bit that way. Uh, two good cards. No, not bad cards, I'll suggest, for this time of year. Uh, and we kick off with two- and three-year-old handicaps, the maiden... For the boys, starts us off, uh, and we do get a good combination of two and three year olds. Which way have you gone? Yeah, nice little race uh, to start the day. Uh, probably hard to go past the um, horse that tried outstanding for the Waterhouse Spot Stable in Les Vampires. Um, got the rails here, probably jumps to the front here, and they're all going to have to chase and run it down. Um, if it can live up to that trial form, looks hardest to beat. Um, main danger, the resuming magic. Um, I had a bit of a boom about it as a um, last preparation. Probably, uh, yeah, only had the start and got put out. Um, maybe be ready to show some more. Uh, I have, for the sake of the tip, put Les Vampires on top. I think it's too short, uh, but trials are both good. A couple of things against it. I think, first of all, Nash on uh, the second favourite is going to be right on its back and probably pressuring it uh, as he resumes here. Uh, and there's a couple of trialers I didn't mind at a price. One, uh, Cabellus has been saved. Uh, I know it had its debut last time out, but where it goes next, I'd follow it for now. And I think the other blue colours here, Mur Mural Crown, can get a nice run. Uh, that latest trial, when it got clear air, hit the line quite well. So a little, little couple of bits and pieces around the favourite. I think I'd want Black Figures to back it here, though. Uh, that may well be a nice way to start the day for some. The second is, again, the two- and three-year-old maiden for the Phillies, over 1,200 metres. Uh, and after going all the, way, all the way around the world with this, I decided that the uh, Peril form was the better for me. There wasn't a lot else to go with, and that's left me with uh, the two that ran second and third to it. They're there. Gets Dylan Gibbons, gets a nice run, hopefully can break through. Uh, here from Skipper Beat, who gets J-Mac and probably leads this field. I don't think there's a lot of other... Um, yeah, there's not a lot else here. What do you think? Yeah, I um, I thought the same. I come back to there, there, here. I thought you were right. So I think the pre or form uh, is the form line to go through here. And uh, this slightly raised horse that um, gets the blinkers on today looks hardest to beat. The third, I did have a few looks at Fabergé, but couldn't really find any out of that trial to follow. The third, 1,900 metres, benchmark 72. How have you lined these up? Yeah, tough race here, really open field, hard to get a guide on, you know, these some of these horses have uh, been struggling of late. I've gone for um, number seven, Travelling Kate here, uh, third up. First two runs in this preparation have all been good and closing off all within a, a length of the winner. Um, I think it can also run well. Doesn't win often, but it's always in and around the placing. So uh, I've got it on top and uh, best of a, an average lot. I've, I've gone the same way. I had, it sat, sat outside lead two weeks ago here over the track and distance, was quite brave. I think it's a better run. They could even lead these. I don't think there's a heap of pace here apart from Pharaoh's reign. Uh, I think they're the two that go straight to the front and I think they're the two that fight out the finish. I'm going to go the same way with you, Travelling Kate uh, from Pharaoh's reign who does lead and, or at least will sit outside Travelling Kate and is back from us leading up a couple of Saturday races, uh, runs well here. I think they're the two key chances uh, similar thoughts to you, not else, a lot else here. 1,100 metres, benchmark 64 comes up next. This, What are you doing with this short price bush horse? Yeah, I think it, I've got it on top. I think it's got a little bit of an ability here. It's a little bit skinnier than what I would have liked. Um, probably 50, half a point under what it really should be. But I do think it's packed with plenty of ability. And I do like the... Horses, when they come from places like Grafton, they tend to back that up. It's a, it's a track you can follow. So I do have it on top. This is a, 
a race that can win uh, coming to Sydney first time. Probably the blue colours is the main danger. I set out to get it beat. Look, I'm not confident saying I have got it beat, but I think there's two at a price that I want to bet around it. The first is Pink Cashmere, who comes up from Melbourne. Its trials were great this time. In last trial, beat Kalina in a trial uh, under a little bit of riding. Before that, hit the line quite well in a trial at Cranbourne uh, and does bring some proper, albeit Melbourne, metro form here. I think runs well. Uh, and one destiny, he chased Omni-Man. It was on Omni-Man's back last time. Probably the form sprinter in Sydney at the moment. And... That's got to be better form than Grafton to me, and it's 11 bucks. I'm going to try and play each way around to them. I know Pink Cashman's price might be gone this morning. Look, uh, this Tangle would come, could come out and win. It did uh, run okay behind Paris or last prep in town, but just feels a little bit short coming from coming from the bush to me. Nice mover and everything. Could blow him away, but it's going to play with the odds there. The fifth is a 1,250-metre girls benchmark 64. Uh, this is almost a bush race as well, and I've ended up in line with the market here. I've got Memoria on top, inside gate, off the back of some okay runs up in Queensland and a good run behind Pink Baroque last time. If it had a senior jockey, I'll declare it. My biggest concern is where it gets to from gate one with the three kilo claimer on top. Leaves me a bit a bit uh, less enthusiastic, but there's nothing much else here, Beaver, unless you found something. Yeah, look, it wasn't a race that I was overly keen on. I've gone for the unicorn. Um, uh, got, got its tongue over the bit a bit last start, and um, that, that meant it dropped out at Canterbury. Um, prior to that, had some decent form down south where it won its maiden fairly comfortably. Uh, I think it can run well. These types of horses can uh, jump, out at, jump out of the ground at any time, and this isn't a tough race, but not overly keen on the race at all. Yeah, particularly in uh, Phillies and Mare's grade. The six is a benchmark 72, 1250 metres, and I am going with the Saturday runner coming back here as well, Amnesty, uh, who gets running line, gets Zach Lloyd, did some good stuff uh, in the provincials before coming to that uh, Saturday race. It ran okay, uh, probably didn't show the turn of foot we'd seen prior, uh, but uh, was up in grade. I think this suits much better, gets a cosy run, and we see the best of it here. Uh, from if I had to find a danger with the scratchings, Perhaps, perhaps Ramones gets the lead under Tim Clark and runs well, but uh, we've lost another couple of, another few of the more talented horses in this race, really. What have you found? Yeah, I think that's, the, with the scratching, is it does set up nice for Amnesty. You're right, comes back from from Saturday form to here and prior to that had one three on the trot. I think this sets up nicely for it to, to go back to the winner's circle, gets the kilo and a half claim, so it gets in nicely here, weighted well. Uh, going well, and I've got a good job on board. And we're going to wrap up with a 1,550-metre benchmark, 72. How are we finishing the day? Yeah, I'm, I'm finishing the day with little beginnings. Um, shows the seventh for its last run, but that was, again, in better company on Saturday form, and it had to sit out the lot, so the leader there and do all the all the working work and take the field up to them. Um, should get a better run in this on the fence. I think that sets up well for it. This is this is not a tough race. Um, so I've got it on top here. I think a horse like number seven, Lolly Yates, can improve. That was in a bad first up run, fitter here, um, and has put some nice runs together um, previously. I have decided it's go time for Media Star Guest. A couple of tick overs to warm up, freshened up back to 1300 metres where it ran well enough. Back up in distance, I think this is uh, the play here. Finds a decent enough run. From Little Beginnings, you've covered off, and I was scared of money starting to arrive for the Lolly Yates, now second up, and that's what's happened. Uh, so it may well be, you know, the goal here, second up to get on the board in Australia, but we will watch and learn. I kept coming back to Miss Einstein as next best, um, but now with the scratchings, I'm sort of less enthusiastic. So uh, five from four predominantly for me. Uh, your best in value. I'm going to make my best, actually. We'll get out of the way first. Num race two, number one, there, there, in a tricky day. Uh, and I didn't really have a value. I've lost a lot of my value, and I was more looking to play around favourites. So for the sake of a value, let's go with race race four, number five, one destiny, as perhaps over the odds. What about you, Beaver? Yeah, I've gone my best bet. Race four, number one, Tanglewood. I think it will be winning and... Um... Get the chockies. 
And my value is race three, number seven, Travelling Kate. Beautiful. We head down to the hillside track in Melbourne for the Mel for the Victorian meeting there, where the rail is out 13 metres on a soft track. I think they'll be swooping up the middle of the hill by the end of the card. We're kicking off with a 1,400 metre handicap for the cheer-olds. How are you going to start off here? Yeah, starting the day with the favourite here. That was impressive. Um, and it's only starts from the Hay Stable. Uh, one start, one win, a comfortable win, and I think it'll run well here. Same. Uh, I We've never seen it on a dry track is the only concern, but it's been impressive every time it's stepped out. Uh, and there is a little bit of cut out of this one. Uh, from Diabelli, who the blue colours have been lethal every time we've switched to Melbourne in the last couple of months. They've got it right. So has to run well again here coming down from Newcastle. Two key chances to start the day, uh, but I think this might be a nice horse rise to dawn and might have some early spring hopes. Uh, good card, actually, for that because there's a couple later in the card I'm going to say the same thing about. Not too much this race, which is a 1,000-metre benchmark 70. Yulong Minister comes out, and if we get to a dry track, uh, which I'm not sure we will, then I've got uh, Diamonds in the Sky on top, but does need to be bone dry. Uh, honest on Pacer that's going to run well with the claim. Uh, if it is still soft there, I, I, I have Luna Cat on top in a tricky race. What have you done here? Yeah, tricky race. I looked at Diamonds in the Sky, but its first up record's not good. Uh, mm -hmm. It tends to do its better work later in the preparation. I've gone for a bit of value, tax-free profit. Mm -hmm. I think it steps back in great here. Um, it was only uh, raced at Flemington um, behind Major Su Suali um, in a pretty tough race there. Prior to that was going okay. Pretty consistent horse. Um, just sort of present a good value here. The third is a 2,400 metre mare's benchmark 70, where you're going to be either with the lead up form or against it. Which way have you gone? Madagon number four, Angel of Light. Um, like it's uh, last start win, uh, beat Matthew. And Matthew came out and um, blew away at its last start. It was a very impressive win. Prior to that was going okay in Sydney. I think this sets up nicely and um, I've got it on top. Can run well, main danger, hard squeeze. That was a good win last start, um, beating the favourite, and all honours there, so I think it can be hardest to beat. I went the same way. I just went against that that Botany race, or the hard squeeze race, because, well, I thought Botany was a better run. They just had to sit outside lead and was very tough. Got nabbed by hard squeeze who had the rails run. Uh, so out of that race is Botany is a horse I wanted to find. But I went the other way and went to Angel of Light for everything you've just said. I think it gets a perfect run. It could even it either sits uh, it either leads or gets leaders back here. Uh, gets a perfect run and I think it's going to be very hard to beat. I think six fifty is a great price in this race. The fourth is a fourteen hundred meter benchmark seventy. Uh, where what's happened here? I've lost Coriolis this morning, so I'm going to ask you what you think. Yeah, same same. I thought the same. I lost it as well. Um, for that reason, I've stuck with um, Welly Bell. I think it can run well third up here. It's been really good, this preparation. Um, ran a good race first up and then was pretty explosive last start. Um, put a, put six lengths on him, um, albeit it was a maiden. Steps up in grade here. Um, but I think it can run well if it can continue on that way. But there's lots of horses here that have got some good last start form. Um, even the likes of Turf 2 was pretty good at Donald. Um, it can run well. Um, so I'll be playing around those two. I've gone, well, with this scratching, I've gone with She's Pretty Rich, who has chased Party for one, uh, Sione and Jean Jerome of late. I think that's better form than this. Uh, gets, if the inside's a place to be by now, which we hopefully we'll know, I think gets a nice enough run and is going to be hard to beat here. Uh, but uh, I'll wait and watch where Coriolis pops up on the weekend, hopefully. The fifth is a 1,400-metre benchmark 70 as well, and I am with the resumer here. I, I think this Hughes might be a nice horse. It uh, did uh, some nice stuff last prep, a couple of nice wins, and uh, outside of being lucky, it's only defeat. It's track work and trials leading to this have all been great, uh, and if it's got any ability whatsoever, it uh, should win this from Castilian who finally got going last time out to, in a decent enough race on a Saturday, comes back to midweek grade, swoopers gate for Laura Lafferty. I think they're the two key hopes. Uh, 
in saying that, are obviously terrified of anything Blake Shin jumps on in the market. But what have you done here? Yeah, same, same. I've got Hughes on top. I think it looks like it's a horse that might be on the way up this preparation. Um, goes well fresh, won its only start fresh, um, and won it very comfortably. Uh, if it's primed and tuned up enough, I think it can run extremely well. It's on top for me as well. The six is a benchmark 70 over the 1,600 metres. Is today the day for you, Tasman Park? Uh, I'm not going that way. Um, I'm going for number five, Ellen's Licence. I liked its first up win. Um, might have just been a little bit of second up syndrome last start. I think it can run super well in this. I've got it on the top. Um, some good chances here. Presser, I think, is also a horse that can run well. Um, and I've got it as my second pick. I have gone against it as well. I, I th yeah, When it got nabbed late, uh, albeit jumping off the fence there, I just decided to go against all that heavy track lead up and went to the top weight, who's a winner, Regal Asmon. Nice resumption. Uh, sat at the back at sale, swept home and cleaned them up. I think this is a race of non-winners and uh, it likes find a line four from its nine starts. Hopefully it goes five from ten here. You're getting double figures uh, and a claim for Gary Lowe, who... His booking suggests it may well be closer, or at least in the running line, I think can give you a sight. My best value on the card, because some of these don't like finding the post with it, their nose in front. The seventh is a 1800 meter benchmark 70, and the price is well and truly gone for Time Quest. Uh, it was given no hope whatsoever last time out. Flashed home uh, with Blake Shin now taking over. It's not going to be back and last. It's going to be sitting... Uh, somewhere up there in the firing line and it will blow these away on top for me but it's a dollar 40 now so i'm not really telling you too much beaver nothing to add mates uh don't go broke back on winners and this will be a winner so move on and the last we're at the 1400 meters at 70 level again uh, are you finishing with the fave here yeah i think it looks too hard to beat in this as well um clear on top for me um nothing much to add in other than um can't see it getting beat. It's a nice horse. I had an opinion of it last prep. I'm spewing it. I missed it resuming its sale, uh, but I've been waiting for it for about a month now. It'll win here. It'll go to Saturday grade uh, where it will run well at a track like Caulfield in a much better race than this. That's how I'm finishing today, and I'm going to finish by making it – well, the last two will win, so my best on the card are race eight, number eight, and race seven, number seven, I think, number eight as well. Uh, my value, race five, number – Race six, number one, Regal Asmon. What are yours, Beaver? Same, same. All up your last two. Whatever you're in front on the day coming to the last, um, put it on and just get your interest. And if you're behind, chase it there. And <laughs> value bet. Race three, number four, Angel of Light. Perfect. Uh, good bet. I'm pretty keen on this Sandown card, actually. So it might be time to open, uh, let the moths out of the wallet. Uh, anything up north? You've got a few at Durban for us. Uh, race two, number 13, Traviata, first upper there from the O'Day Hoisted stable. I think it'll run really well. I uh, got it on top. Uh, race four, number five, Deep Rouge. I think it can, one last start, I think mm -hmm. it can back up again and run extremely well. And I had in the last race a bit of value. Race eight, number seven, Hyde, resuming there. Perfect. Check out progroupracing.com.au for regular tips, news and ups, updates. Subscribe to our mailing list there to get our weekend show into your inbox free every week. And we'll be back Thursday night to get stuck into the Valley and Ranwick this Saturday. Thank you, Beaver. Thank you, mate. Catch you soon. Bye, guys.